I'm Fabian Pokesteller and I will be talking about why no one is using blockchain. So my background is, um, I was a former Ethereum developer, I was actually the lead dApp developer. I proposed ERC20 and I proposed uh, another standard that's very relevant for what I'm doing now called ERC725. Yeah, and uh, I also worked on Web3.js and uh, on the Mist browser and lots of other things that everybody's using who's building on or around Ethereum. So I want to talk today about why no one is using blockchain. Um, and this is a controversial, right? So if we think about the size of the, of the crypto space, like all the cryptocurrency together, right? At the peak, we were at $2.9 trillion in market cap value. Like, sounds like a lot of money, right? 2021, a lot of money was in crypto. But the thing is, that's, um, that's amazing, right? Great market, you know, everything grew. But who is using blockchain? If you really, like, drizzle this down to, to uh, looking at who is using blockchain and for what, right? This is source that says that we have 85 million wallets, like, across blockchains. I mean, the source says at least... Blockchain wallets could mean whatever, could be just Bitcoin, whatever. But let's assume that's like, you know, a too low number. Let's assume there's more because a lot of people just have crypto on exchanges, right? So they're not even using blockchain, they're just like trading. So let's assume we have 150 million users in that somehow, you know, either trade or hodl or do something with crypto. Binance, for example, has 30 million users. Uh, there's plenty of exchanges across like the whole world. So let's assume 150 million is a good number. Might be 100, I don't know. If we actually look at who's using blockchain more actively, it's better to look at an Ethereum-like space, right? And MetaMask is a good metric because almost all the tokens exist on Ethereum or any kind of EVM chains, and MetaMask works really well for those. So there's 21 million active MetaMask users, according to another <laughs> statistic, right? So that sounds great. That's a lot of users, right? But the truth is, as you probably also know, most of your friends, you know, people you convinced to buy crypto or like they said, they, I, I want to buy this, you said, hey, you should definitely not keep it on the exchange. You definitely get MetaMask, write down the seed phrase, keep it safe, right? So a lot of those users actually aren't really using blockchain either. Because if you look at that radar, another source, right? We are at around uh, 2 million active uh, users that uses dApps. And there's like 12,000 that they track across different chains. And that's not even EVM chains. So we have now 2 million users that actually use dApps, right? The thing is, if you look at more, right? You see, oh, wow, play-to-earn games have 40% of bots, probably, right? And if you go by DeFi, there's probably like 50 to 60% of bots using DeFi. So you actually end up with something like this. We end up with 0.66% of actual blockchain users that use blockchain on either a daily or a bi-daily or every three days or whatever, every four days in some way. And that's actually pretty sad, right? With a $2.9 trillion market cap and we have like 99.33% just hotlers and traders and like literally under a percent of users, and maybe my 150 million is wrong, so the percentage might be 1% or less than 1% or 2%. It's like tiny, right, if you look at the whole thing. So what's the problem? Why is that the case? Like why no one is using blockchain? Like actually using blockchain? And even here that we are like in a more crypto native space and even DEF CON tomorrow, how many people actually use like apps on a daily basis like it's rare right it's a very rare case so what's the problem I think one of the big problems is everything was too much focused on money and it obviously made sense because the first thing that you know blockchains were good at is creating tokens or creating a coin which is money out came then obviously tokens I had to play in that as well because I created ERC20 which then like that I made DeFi which led to more trading and more investing, and literally that's where we are today, right? So a lot of money-focused stuff that happened over the last, um, especially from 2015 to 2018, 19, was a lot about like money DeFi tokens, right? That's a very niche group of people if you think about it. Like your ordinary person, your ordinary Instagram user is not interested in trading, nor interested in like, you know, getting to like invest his, his life savings into some like random projects. They just want to use the internet, you know, the social internet and communicate to people and be, be social in some form or another. 
They don't care about this. So this is a niche group of people, but this has been the niche group of people that really dominated the space for the last few years. Another big problem we have is that the user experience is scary as fuck. As you probably all know, I'm preaching to the choir here, I hope, um, it's complicated, right? In blockchain, you need a wallet, right? You need that wallet thing to do anything with blockchain. But actually, a, a wallet is not a wallet, it's just a key. But it's not even a key, it's just a random number string, right? It's a number string, which is based on another number string, which is uh, your private key. So that's literally like your password. And because we already upgraded in UX a lot, so we made it now simpler, so this number string became 12 words, right? Because we can remember 12 words, we cannot remember very confusing characters. And the cool thing with 12 words is we can use this as a main password to generate more private keys so we can have multiple accounts all secured with one single password and that sounds great so we solved the massive UX problem we don't need to remember complicated strings we just need to remember these 12 words and write them down don't forget them yeah as you tell everyone who goes into crypto so that's easy so you figure this so let's use blockchain fuck there's transaction fees so now you need to pay transaction fees how do you get them it's easy you just go to an exchange you just sign up, complete a KYC, send some money, you know, you buy the coin, you withdraw it to your wallet, and you're good to go, and you're actually a DApp user. It's easy, right? Might have taken three, four, five days, sometimes longer if an American, but eventually you get there, right? So I guess one big problem we have is it's just scary as fuck to use blockchain, right? Most of these people are already scared away halfway through this whole process. But there's a third problem, and I think that's the problem most people don't even know really that it exists yet. There's actually no identity on the blockchain. There's a gibberish identity that nobody can understand, but there's no easy way to verify people or brands or creators, especially now with the NFT wave, right on the blockchain. You can go to OpenSea and you see, oh my God, poor Abe, super famous. And there's this one website here, I can look up the profile, but hey, there's also Etherscan, so I can just like look on Etherscan, right? Look at the true source of everything. So on Etherscan, I see complicated stuff that most people don't understand, but hey, look, there's this contract creator, right? That's the important person, because that's the one who created the Board 8 Yacht Club, right? This is what you really want to care about. His one collection is cool, but he might make 10 other cool collections in the future, so I want to know who that person is. So I go to this address, and then we are lucky. Etherscan already gave it an official tag. So Board at Yacht Club has a deployer tag on Etherscan. And they're also using ENS, so there's for sure some information you can find about them. So what happens, God forbid, that Ethers then gets, like, nuked? And also, the deployer key gets lost, right? Because they had this in MetaMask, and then they reinstalled the computer, and as it so happens, also the ledger, you know, got crushed because the house burned down, God knows what. And also OpenSea shut down too because they run into many issues and all gets very complicated. So now, it's really hard to figure out who was that person and who created, actually bought at Yacht Club, and if they're creating something new, can you really know who was the, is the real one versus the fake one? You can do that, yeah? You can go through the transaction history, you can look up stuff, and eventually you will, like, after, like, one week of analysis, you probably figure it out. But a smart contract couldn't know that because a smart contract just sees a random key. And if, the, if you switch the ENS, because obviously you lost this key, you need to switch it now to a new address, it gets complicated, right? So if you really think about it on chain, there is no identity. So how can we change this? So I, I talked about a problem, but I have a solution as well. Working on that since a, a few years now. So we just need to upgrade the way we use blockchain. Right? And how we do this, by using universal profiles, obviously. So up, yeah, you all know there's the emoji icon, if you see it on Twitter. It's probably somebody who belongs to the Lux of Femme. But basically, Universal Profiles is a set of LSPs. You all know what that is? 
Yeah, these are Luxo standard proposals. A new name, right? So, as you probably know, ERC, right? I made that term up back in the day. Ethereum request for comment was never meant to be the actual standard name. It was meant to actually just get input and then come to standards. This way I corrected it. I just called it straight out, Luxo standards proposal, so then there's no discussion later. So we have actually a set uh, of standards for universal profiles. It's LSP 0, 1, 3, and 6. And sorry, it's not in a row because these things formed a bit different, but they are the irrelevant thing that creates something that we call a universal profile. Most of these standards are actually based on something called ERC 725, which is a standard I proposed in 2017 already that evolved over the years that uh, had even an alliance forming with plenty of people saying they want to use it, but it never really got the adoption because it wasn't even done yet. Now in Luxo, we're actually getting this done, right? We have get, gotten this done and now we have completed it. So that was easy. Let's talk a bit about the technical things but I tried to make it simple. Who's technical here? Ah, who knows about smart contracts? <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, I try to really keep it simple. So it's a big, bold claim, right? We have all these UX problems and we can solve them with some like blah, blah standards that like this dude made up. Um, let's see. So one big problem that we have is we have a key, right? This is just a random address, no information attached to it, hard to manage, you can lose it easily, and you have to have to get transaction fees, you know, or the native token of the blockchain you want to use in order to really like you know, do something on the blockchain. So imagine you have a smart contract based account. And that's nothing new, by the way. Has been around for a while, right? When you do a very simple basic smart contract account, uh, that's your unique address of your profile, and you can have obviously you know, many profiles, and they don't necessarily need to be your person. But the good thing about a smart con is you can attach information to it. And because it's this using a substandard called ER75Y, which is a generic key value store, we can now attach any kind of information to our profile, unlimited going forward. That can be obviously your profile pictures, JSON files and whatever linked, but it could also be a protocol that someone else is building that you now want to reference from your profile, like a reputation system or some kind of decentralized follower system or some kind of decentralized Twitter feed or whatever people can come up with. So you could just now attach anything to your profile because it's a very generic key value store. At the same time, it's a generic executable smart contract that can talk to any other smart contract and do anything a key can do as well. But it can do even more because it can use create 2, which a normal key cannot do. Um, and that rhymes. Um, but that's ERC-725X. And ERC-725X is another substandard of the 725 standard. And the cool thing is, and that was actually not on purpose, if you think about it, that means our profiles have X and Y chromosomes. So they're very human. <laughs> um, so basically, we end up with a smart contract account that can do anything and have any information attached to it. Pretty generic allows for a lot of flexibility. So if we use this now by a key, we have the same problem that we had before, right? Now it's one password, we have to remember it, secure it with our ledger and in our mom's you know, house somewhere in a book, obviously, to make sure it definitely doesn't get lost, right? But the cool thing is, we can just replace this with a smart contract. Um, and we can replace this with a smart contract that can now be controlled by many devices or many keys. It doesn't matter anymore, you know, who's controlling it, which makes keys redundant. It makes these keys not important anymore because they're replaceable. And this can not only be one of your devices, but this can be obviously a multi-sig. It could be a social recovery. It could be a recovery service that you trust. It could be whatever you want it to be that you plug in front of it that recovers your, now we're in the dark room here, um, your profile or lets you act on your profile. So, you still have the problem that we still need to pay for transaction fees, right? That's complicated. You need to now get, you know, the whole exchange thing you have to do. The cool thing is, because it uses a standard, LSP6, and there's a way that you can actually make another party pay for you, what we call a transaction relay service, 
that actually sends your transaction to the blockchain and you just sign it with one of your keys. And that's all possible um, because of one single function. It's called execute relay call. So that one single function literally solves the whole problem of not needing to pay anymore for the transaction fees. Because now anyone could make a service where they say, hey, I'm like this cool new T-Mobile like of the blockchain space. Come to me, I create your profile, I give you a free month, give, you get 50 million gas for free, and otherwise, after that, pay me like 20 bucks, 30 bucks, 40 bucks a month, and you can use blockchain, and you don't have to worry about the whole like transaction fee stuff at all anymore, right? We had to learn, you know, what gigabytes mean in mobile data. I guess we can learn what gas means in blockchain. So having this ability literally allows us to completely circumvent the problem of how we onboard users, because there can be now services doing that. So how do we get these standards on chain, right? Because we have a smart contract account that's already somebody needs to deploy that, right? And we need transaction relay service and all of this jazz, right, to make this stuff happen. That's exactly why we create a new blockchain called Luxo. So by creating a new blockchain, we have the benefit that we actually can subsidize early users. We can actually pay for the first users' accounts and for their transactions making blockchain onboarding and having a Web3 profile totally seamless. While at the same time, we're instigating an economy of uh, competitive transaction relay services that you pay for. And obviously, because they want to have users, right, they want to give some freebie, or maybe even watch, let, let people watch ad advertisement or whatever, like this gateway relay service down here in the corner. And actually, we made a hackathon last August, or this August, just last month, uh, where one of the bounties was exactly this, and it was obviously run on Gitcoin. <laughs> That's why also we are here. Um, and people build transaction relay services. Actually, we got four transaction relay services out of it that are pretty useful, that have all their own way of how they operate and how they charge users and in which way. So when you have solved these problems, how you get users in, the ability to attach information to an account, which basically makes these accounts completely on-chain verifiable by other smart contracts, and you have the ability to change security over time, so forget about the first seed phrase, it doesn't matter anymore, right? Your friends could give you access back, a recovery service could get to give you access back, whoever can give you access back, right? We literally solve all the problems, and we can really make Web3 accounts accessible and workable for that future going on. And as Vitalik said in the previous talk, Right? What is the biggest problem this space has? It's mainstream or any adoption by normal users. And this stack of standards, and each piece here is a module, it's a standardized module, does solve this. For example, if you're playing a VR game, right? You could literally authorize the game. The game generates a key, you authorize this in your profile, he can now act as you, you can be in the VR game being yourself on chain, but the game has a key with some certain, certain levels of restrictions. That really allows true metaverse. That could even never be possible with a key account, right? We can make NFTs. We can even use ER725Y for NFTs, and we actually we did that uh, in our standard called LSP8, where you have now an unlimited key value store uh, on your NFTs, meaning attaching any kind of information, reference any protocol, whatever you want to do, you can now in your NFTs. And these NFTs can reference back to its creator profile. And the creator profile can reference back to the NFT itself. Allows for on-chain verification of authenticity, something that's completely impossible right now. And this, because you now have used real people, you can actually have culture currencies, communities, DAOs, interaction in groups that uses blockchain as a level of, of arranging their community that was just simply not possible with that level of traction or even, you know, user uh, usability at all. And whatever you can make up, right, it's the sky's the limit. Anything could be built now on top of these universal profiles. Just these standards alone allow now thousands of more things to be standardized. And that's why we ask you to take the pink pill and join us in building the new creative economy and really bring this place to the next level uh, with the right setup, the right basis for making this thing fly. Thank you.
I had a question about um, the universal profiles. Also, if you have a grants program and porting um, projects from Ethereum to Luxo. So I guess it's kind of like three questions, but maybe you can answer it in one. All right. Uh, grant program. Yes, yeah, so we will have a grant program. Yes. Uh, still to be worked out. We still have to do some, you know, uh, other setups. Obviously, we need to start mainnet. That's coming within the next few months. Um, porting things from Ethereum, porting things from any EVM chain is extremely simple. Because for a developer, nothing changes. We created a browser extension and we're creating a mobile application that allows you to control your profile interact with dApps that function the same way in the outside like MetaMask. So if you're building a dApp and you want to use this in Luxo, but you don't want to have all the complication of your users that they have with MetaMask, you build this in Luxo, they use the universal browser extension, nothing changes for you. Like literally nothing needs to be changed on your end. With the difference that the key that you get back that you're asking from MetaMask or the browser extension is not a key anymore. It's a smart contract. So now you can literally attach any information there, read any information you require, and do a lot more things. So I have a question. It may be a tough one. Let's see uh, what your answer is. Like, uh, why should I use uh, the uh, app instead of using like uh, ENS with a social wallet or something like that? Why you should use Universal Profiles versus ENS and? Yes, versus ENS with a social wallet attached, like a, to, con to control the keys. Good question. Because ENS doesn't solve uh, the problem of obviously managing your account properly, right? We still have that problem. It doesn't solve the problem that uh, you have um, uh, paying for transaction fees and so on. What ENS solves, it's a name system that has a resolver where you could write it some information in. Some of that information is not even smart contract readable. So what, why I would say you know, a, a ES75 account is better is because it has a generic bytes, 32 bytes key value store. So you can attach anything and it doesn't need to be predefined in the resolver. And honestly, ENS is just a name system that can be put on top of a UP. So your UP is your actor. That's, that's you. That's your address doing things. And ENS is just a name pointing to your UP. Right now, it points to a random resolver that has like a whatever your Twitter in there or whatever. Um, I wouldn't call that a profile. That's just a little t piece, of, piece of information in, in your, on your name. But it doesn't resolve all the other problems, right? It's not a real actor, really, in that sense. Hi. I, I've heard uh, there are some uh, wallets in Ethereum, uh, Argent, let's say. Why, how it looks so different from these solutions? So there's also yeah, there's smart contract wallets, right? And um, it comes down again to, yes, they are a portion of the problem, but they're not the whole thing together. And also the problem is most of these are not standardized, right? There's a custom contract that's built in a custom way that works with a custom app. It's not a standardized thing. It's not pieces that you can even use separate and in whatever ways you want. They're not modular. Like what we build is Lego blocks that you can stack together in any way you want. That, that, that will make things possible that I, I don't hear, haven't even thought about yet, right? Universal Profiles is just one thing you can do with these pieces. But there will be thousands of other things you can build. Um, just a, the year 75 account system can work for different things that are way beyond profiles, right? Or the new NFTs as well and so on. Um, so it's, it's really a question of, if you want this to be really gaining traction, it needs to be open enough, but specified enough, but also standardized enough to really have traction. I'm not sure if anybody is building truly on Arjun Wallet, besides that they treat it as a wallet, right? And I wouldn't call a universal profile even a wallet. It's, it can function as a wallet. It's obviously an address can holding things, right? But we have to go away from the wallet notion. It's not all about money. It's about actually your on-chain identity that can sign you in, that can hold assets, that can act with DAOs, that can you know, just vote on stuff and whatever we want to do. So it's a lot more than just tokens. There's another question, thanks. Here, there, you need to turn on the, yeah. One, two, thank you. Um, yeah, so I work um, with the Ethereum Foundation on BLS Wallet. It's a smart contract wallet that's designed to um, yeah, bring some optimizations to layer two. But um, on top of so that. What's the name oh, again? BLS Wallet. 
Yeah. And basically, there is a standard that we're using um, that has come about called EIP 4337. That's regarding the signing. Oh, can you not hear me? Right. You use 1271 or what? Sorry. Yeah, I'm not, I can hear myself really loud. I don't know how you can't hear me. Um, sorry, yeah, so EIP 4337 um, does account abstraction. That's one part of what we use. Um, we're also looking for our V2 of our contract wallet to do, um, uh, yeah, use Gnosis Safe's wallet, which has the modular structure. So we, we've implemented recovery, um, multi-action, uh, yeah, w uh, gasless transactions. Um, there's also been GSN in the past. But yeah, we've got all these features already. Um, we're looking at V2 to be modular with Gnosis Safe as well. Um, yeah, and there are standards around this. So I'm wondering, yeah, why build another network? Yeah, um, I mean, I haven't specifically looked at this, but if I would make a bold statement now, and I mean, I do really appreciate all the work done at Ethereum, I would say it's too complicated. The, 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 like, it's too much, much complex things. Just the account abstraction itself, in my opinion, is, is well solved already with one function. Because trying to all make this whole propagation and who pays for what and trying to protocolize this, in my opinion, is too early. I think it is, can just simply be solved by making these transaction relay servers having their own rules for whatever reason and why they forward things and how they want to be paid back or not or whatever. I don't think this needs to be protocols yet. Um, like, uh, Knossos Safe is also quite complex. I mean, you can hang, you know, like the key manager you saw, LSP6, can be anything, right? It could be Knossos Safe. You can put whatever, like multi sig in front, whatever you want to do. Um, the most important thing is that core and that core account. That's the, that's the code you can't change because once you deploy your account, that thing is, has to stay there for years, right? It has to be generic. I mean, you could make it upgradable, I get it, but that's, it has a lot of other problems that you get into that like, we are not happy if you make your user just make the wrong transaction and they literally fuck up the storage and the, anything. Um, I, I get it. You could make this upgradable, but it makes things... It's complicated. Here, you have literally a set data function a get data function to get generic information from the contract and write it. You have an execute function, and we have the 1271 as well as signature function, and that's literally the core piece. Everything else is modular and outside, and you can plug any of the custom things that people come up with or have already built in there as well. Account abstraction works also nice on top or underneath universal profiles. If we add account abstraction into Luxo, right, for example, uh, or if, if you use a UP on Ethereum, you get with account abstraction an additional level of abstraction that you could use, but you could already do that on smart contracts as well. So um, it's just beneficial on top of each other. And I think that set of standards and the way it's done is simple enough, but generic enough to be very flexible. Um, and that's why I think it, it's, it makes sense. Um, it's great that you're simplifying for users. Uh, you mentioned account abstraction and some other things. Do you have anything in place that lets you um, protect the user from having their data uh, and their identity tracked across different applications and dApps if they don't know what they're doing? Do you have anything on a Mac that does that? Um, so the thing is, a blockchain-based profile is inherently a public profile, right? Because you're writing it on the blockchain. So if you put your face there and you make transactions and you say, hey, truly, that's me, people will be able to track whatever you're doing, right? That's just how blockchains work. If you want to be anonymous, have five profiles, use three for them for your XXX sites and, you know, that don't have a face or look like a frog and uh, use the other ones for your public profile. So you have to, we have to teach people to uh, dis like, uh, differentiate between where they use what. Because as long as we don't have on-chain privacy in a very truly scalable manner, uh, we won't have that. But also, you could put you know, your profile data on your own Google Drive, uh, your, your picture, your name, your description, and then you can just delete it at any point in time, right? If you don't want that people know your yeah, description anymore, go to your Google Drive, delete the file, done, right? It doesn't need to be stored decentralized, this kind of information. You can store it on your home router if you want to, right? Wherever you want to store it. If you get popular, you have a problem, your ISP will be complaining that everybody's requesting your home router, but uh, maybe Google Drive is a better place, but um, yeah. So, like, it's not an immediately solved problem with that. No blockchain account is solved solving that right away. But, I mean, maybe to add to this, you can add a, a, a privacy 
abstracting things on top of a profile, right? You could have a storage of information that you uh, allow with selective um, permissions to be revealed to certain parties and others not, right? You could, you could but this has nothing to do with blockchain per se. That's just, you know, permission systems that sit off chain that you just reference from your profile. So you could give everybody a different, automatically give everybody a different address per domain or something, something along those lines. It's more that you would like put this data off chain and there's an access control mechanism that allows you to say, hey, you can access this, you can access that. But whatever is on chain, whatever you do with transaction with your profile, people will be able to see. There's no way around that. There's no way technically that we have without on chain zero knowledge proofs and generic smart contract execution. Thanks everyone, like the other guy said there. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for, for listening. Yeah.